right, everyone. Welcome into another episode of Dynasty Top Buys with Zilla Fantasy Elite. I am your host, Todd, here, and we're going to look over Clyde Edwards Hilaire as one of the top dynasty buys, and let's take a peek at why that is. First off, we're going to start with Clyde Edwards Hilaire's playerprofiler.com profile. We see some interesting workout metrics here. Um, first, starting off, five foot seven, a little short. Uh, 207 pounds, so he's stout. He's got a 90th percentile BMI, and that's important just for the fact that the higher the BMI, the less likely these guys are to take a massive hit or a pounding and get injured with the, the higher BMI there. So that correlates in general with uh, less injury prone um, type of guys. And same with the agility and um, all these kind of uh, vision scores and stuff that these guys have it just allows them to take less hits so with the bmi that's pretty good uh, next thing for the running back stats actually we we see the number one correlated running back metric for fantasy success um, coming out of college is actually this college target share he comes in at two point or ten point two percent, seventy six percentile. That is the number one correlated metric, and that's simply because that shows that the person is able to catch the ball out of the backfield, or they have some sort of receiving chops. Given that most leagues now are PPR, obviously that's a bonus. But just the fact that a reception is worth a lot more fantasy points than a carry. That is why that is the number one correlated metric with the top 40 dynasty running backs. Simply because one target, you're generally getting for a running back in between 7 to 10 yards per reception. You're getting nowhere near that per carry. Uh, add on top of that, any bonus for the reception itself. And you can see why these people with the high target shares are the number one correlated metric. He's at 76 percentile, and if you think about it, on that 2019 LSU team, having a college target share of 10.2 percent with a team like that is pretty impressive. Uh, the next most correlated thing is actually the college dominator at number two. You see him at 27th there, 18.3 um, percent college dominator rating. Usually you want to see that over 20, um, at least for the running back, but he's at 27th. That LSU team in 2019 was ridiculous, so that can kind of explain away some of that, but that is a ding against his um, number two thing. He's only at the 27th percentile. You like to see those metrics over 50th. And then the next two are actually the speed score at number three and the 40-yard dash at number four. So we see the speed score at 35th percentile. He's a little bit heavier at two, 207 pounds, but he only ran a 4.640. So in terms of the NFL, he's not super fast. Uh, a lot of these running backs that are pretty solid are in the upper 4.4s four or low 4.5s. Um, some of those elite guys go in the 4.39 like Jonathan Taylor. He's sitting there at 4.60, which is just below average at 47th percentile. And then the number five most correlated is college yards per carry, which he's above at five and a half. He's in the 52nd percentile there. So he only meets two of the five metrics. And generally, when we say they don't meet three of those top five metrics, if you're going to be in the top 40 dynasty running backs, you're going to be an outlier if you don't meet at least three of those five top metrics. He doesn't. And we've already seen him produce last year RB number 22 numbers. He's being drafted as a top 40 running back. So he would be one of these outliers. And there's more reasons behind this for why he should be considered one of these outliers in the running back, where it's about 10% of the running backs don't meet those uh, three of the top five being above 50% for those metrics. And the big reason for him is just his pass catching chops and the fact that he plays for Kansas City. So he's going to have tons of scoring opportunities and tons of receptions, most likely throughout his first five years, um, given that he's got a five year contract with Kansas City. Should he remain healthy, we should see him inside that top 40 pretty consistently. So with that being said, let's kind of measure some of those Kansas City stats throughout the last uh, four years. So we have 2017. That was the last year that Alex Smith was there. And if you remember, Patrick Mahomes came in at the very end and uh, played a game or two and looked pretty well. They got rid of Alex Smith and after that 2017 season, but Kansas City passed at a 57% pass rate. 43% um, of their plays were runs. That bumped up in 2018 from 57% to 60.1% with Patrick Mahomes' first year there. Kind of makes sense. 
Patrick Mahomes a lot better talent than Alex Smith. They're going to pass a little bit more, rush a little bit less. 2019, they bumped up from 60.1 to 60.6% pass rate. And then this last year, from 60.6 all the way up to 61.0% pass rate. So they've been running the ball less and less. But with that being said, if we look at Clyde Edwards-Alaire, he had 181 rush attempts this season. But if we look at Kareem Hunt's 2018 and 2017, that was Alex Smith's last year and Patrick Mahomes' first year before he got suspended, um, Kareem Hunt that is, he was averaging 17 attempts per game and 16 and a half attempts per game in those two years. Clyde Edwards-Alaire was, um, I believe he was sitting at 13.9, so he's just below... Uh, 14 per game. I think that goes up next year with the COVID uncertainty. I just think they wanted to maintain as much health as they could throughout their running back. So I think he's going to see an uptick there to probably 15 carries a game um, at minimum next season. And if you take into account that he missed three and a half games and he still gave you 1,100 yards. So he had 803 yards rushing on 181 attempts and uh, four touchdowns and then receiving he had 54 targets 36 receptions 297 yards and a touchdown there so he had 1100 yards and five touchdowns and people in the fantasy community are just dogging on this guy and the big reason is he had so much hype coming into the season and then he came out with a bang in week one and just put up a monster fantasy performance against that weak houston run defense People thought he was going to just shoot to the moon and then um, not that 1,100 yards and five touchdowns as a rookie running back. He finished as RB number 22 in the season, missing those three and a half games, but um, he did not live up to his expectations. So the fantasy community is really down on him. They're just like, this guy's a bust and whatnot. But 1,100 yards and five touchdowns, guys, is not a bust in your rookie running back season, especially when you miss three and a half games. So with that being said, let's extrapolate um, next year. Let's assume everything's back to normal for COVID. Um, They're playing it a little bit less conservatively with keeping their guys healthy, considering they had Damian Williams opt out and some other injuries, which is why they brought in Lev Bell to help carry some of that load. Um, Knowing that there'll be a playoff team, they didn't want to just run this guy into the ground. So let's assume next season he's going to get 15 rush attempts per game and he's going to uh, just get the exact same amount of receptions per game so um, not receptions but it's the same amount of targets but he only had a 66.7 percent catch rate last season let's say that bumps up to 75 percent we're looking at uh, 2020 uh, 2021 stats being very very good for this guy and um, as you can see here on the 2021 if we give him 15 games at 15 carries per game um, on average he's gonna have 225 rush attempts let's just say he bumps up from 4.44 yards per carry to uh, 4.7 yards per carry and six touchdowns let's give him he had uh, four last year and then the 65 targets let's just say he's keeping the same amount of targets but he plays 15 games he's going to have 65 targets give him a 75 percent catch rate which is a little bit better than what he did this year and the same yards per reception he's going to have 417 yards and three additional touchdowns so you're looking at him having a total next season of 225.9 points in Um, 2021 and if you put that into the 2020 season James Robinson had 0.1 more points than that in 2020 so you're looking at a James Robinson level type of player and right now I believe that the fantasy community is definitely down in this guy you could get James Robinson's 2020 season for the next four years for pretty cheap right now Um, that would put CEH at number eight overall in the 2020 season if he did that this year and it would actually put him at RB number 10 um, with 15.05 fantasy points per game if um, he would do that in 2020 so With that being said, I think we can look at the type of production that he should have over the next four years in Kansas City there. And if you want that, you know, RB8 to RB12 type of performance, I don't think Clyde Edward Hilaire 
physical profile with the slower 40-yard dash and speed score. I don't think he's ever going to touch that RB number one overall status, but I think he's pretty much locked and loaded as a top 8 to 14 running back for the next four years. And right now, you can get him for a lot cheaper than that. I think you might be able to get him even for um, a mid to late round first in this year's draft. I think people are that low on him. And if you can get him for a mid to late first, if you're playing super flex, maybe a late first, uh, I think you might be able to acquire this guy for late first and the super flex leagues just with the amount of talent that's coming in uh, to the 2021 draft, especially as you get closer to that draft and those draft picks become more and more valuable to people because they get this rookie fever. I think you'll be able to dump one of those uh, late round first to uh, pick up Clyde Edwards Alaire. The fantasy community is out on this guy, and I think that is why he is a dynasty top buy heading into the 2021 season. And that's going to do it for this episode, folks. Hope you enjoyed the Clyde Edwards Alaire uh, 2021 season outlook. Um, hope you enjoyed the Clyde Edwards Alaire episode here. If you want to enjoy more Dynasty content, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell so you're notified anytime any content comes out. During the season, we're putting out game film from NFL Game Pass on a lot of these top rookie running backs and wide receivers, quarterbacks, tight ends, um, a lot of these unknown guys that you want to see the film on. We're dropping those videos during the season. We're doing DFS videos during the season, typically hosted by myself. And then during the offseason, we're going to hit in some of these Dynasty Top Buys and get into a few podcast episodes with some guys. So with that being said, have a good one, guys. Bye.